In this section, we will discuss events and different event relations. The sample space for an experiment is the set of all experimental outcomes. A sample point is an element of the sample space. It is also known as an experimental outcome. An event is a collection of sample points. For example, if I roll a die, my sample space would include the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I could define an event as the event that I roll a number that is even. This is considered an event because this event contains the sample points 2, 4, and 6. The probability of any event is equal to the sum of the probabilities of the sample points contained in the event itself. Therefore, if we can identify all sample points contained in an event, we can simply sum the probabilities of each of those sample points in the event in order to obtain the probability of that event occurring. Therefore, the probability of our event that I roll an even number would be equal to the sum of the probability that I roll a 2 plus the probability that I roll a 4 plus the probability that I roll a 6, since these are the three sample points that are contained in the event. Here, we revisit the example for the telemarketing company. Let's define event A as the event that a customer purchases less than two magazines. We see that our sample space contains 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 magazines. The event that we purchase less than two magazines contain the sample points 0 and 1. Therefore, if we wish to compute the probability of this event occurring, we must sum the probability that a per customer purchases zero magazines plus the probability that a customer purchases one magazine. This sum will give us the probability of this event occurring. Here we see that there is a 0.6 probability that any individual customer that is called will purchase less than two magazines. Let's define event B as the event that a per customer purchases at least one magazine. Looking at our sample space, we see that this event contains the sample point 1, 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, the probability of this event occurring is equal to the sum of the probability of event 1, 2, 3, and 4. Thus, the probability that any individual customer will purchase at least one magazine is equal to 0.6. Make sure that you become familiar with terms such as less than, at least, and more than. It is very easy for students to confuse the endpoints of these terms. Example 3. Consider a game where we draw a card from a stack of 52 cards, a standard deck of cards. This means that there is a 1 over 52 chance of drawing each card in the deck. Let's define C as the event that you draw a face card 
and D as the event that we draw a red card. Ultimately, we want to compute the intersection of events C and D. First, we list all sample points contained in the event C. So in event C, we list all of our face cards. Then we list all red cards in the deck as all sample points for event D. This contains all cards that are hearts as well as diamonds. According to a previous slide, the intersection of events C and D contain all sample points in C and D both. If we compare all sample points in C as well as D, we see that these events have a jack of heart, queen of heart, king of heart, jack of diamond, queen of diamond, and king of diamond in common. Therefore, the probability of the intersection of events C and D is equal to the sum of the probabilities of all sample points contained in the event. The probability of getting a jack of heart plus the probability of pulling a queen of heart plus the probability of pulling a king of heart plus the probability of pulling a jack of diamond plus the probability of pulling a queen of diamond plus the probability of pulling a king of diamond. In this example, each of these sample points have a 1 over 52 probability of being selected. Therefore, the sum of the probability of the intersection of events C and D equals 6 over 52 or 326. Now, let us consider two additional events. Let's define E as the event that we draw an ace and F as the event that we draw a diamond card. We want to compute the union of events E and F. First, we start by listing all sample points that belong to the event that we draw an ace, E. Then we list all sample points that belong to the event F, which is the event that we draw a diamond card. According to a previous slide, the union of events E and F contain all sample points in E or F or both. So we have to go through the entire sample space of the 52 possible cards that are in the deck and for each card we have to ask is this card in E or in F or in both and all cards that are in E or F or both will be contained in the union of events E and F. In order to compute the probability of the union of events E and F we have to sum the probability of pulling each of the individual sample points contained in this union. Since each of these sample points have a 1 over 52 probability of being selected, the probability of the union of events E and F is equal to 16 over 52, or 8 over 26. Let's revisit the telemarketing example again. On slide 11, we computed the probability that a person purchased at least one magazine directly and found the probability that X is at least one is equal to 0.6. Alternatively, we could have used the complements law. 
The compliments law is particularly useful whenever you look over your entire sample space and realize that the vast majority of the sample points in the sample space are contained in the event itself and there are only a few sample points in the sample space that are not in the event. Using the complements law, if B is equal to the event that a customer purchases at least one magazine, the complements law says the probability of B is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement of B. First, we define the complement of B as all sample points in the sample space that do not belong to B itself. Our sample space contains the points 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The event B that a person purchases at least one magazine contains the sample points 1, 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, the only point in the sample space that's not included in this event is the point 0. So the complement to the event B will contain only the point 0. The probability of the complement to this event is equal to the sum of the probabilities of the sample points contained in the event. So here the probability of the the probability of the complement of B is equal to the probability of 0 which is 0.4. So using the complements rule, the probability of the event that we want is equal to 1 minus the probability of its complement. So the probability of the event that we want here is equal to 1 minus the probability of its complement or 0.6. As you see, we get the same exact value that we got when we computed it directly on slide 11. Both techniques will always yield the same results. You should always choose to use the technique that will allow you to get your results as easily and quickly as possible. Let's practice another example using the complements law. On this slide we see that x could equal 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to 20. We have the corresponding probabilities listed on this slide. Suppose we want to compute the probability that x is greater than 3. We could use the direct method to compute this probability by first identifying all sample points in the event x greater than 3. Looking at our sample space, we realize that 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 20 are points that meet the criteria x greater than 3. Notice we did not include the point 3 because 3 is not greater than 3. So we can compute the probability that x is greater than 3 by adding the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 all the way up to adding the probability of 20. Or we could use the complements law. The complements law says the probability of an event is equal to 1 minus the probability of its complement. E we're going to define as the event we wish to compute. So we're going to define E as the event that X is greater than 3. Using the complements law, we must first identify the complement to this event. On the previous slide, we defined event E as containing points 4 all the way through 20. Therefore, the complement to this event contains the sample points 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, the probability of the complement is equal to the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 
plus the probability of 3. This equals 0.26. So the probability of the complement of our event is equal to 0.26. Using the complement's law, the probability of the event we want is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement, or the probability of the event that we want is equal to 1 minus 0.26, which equals 0.74. In this example, using the complement's law greatly simplified our mathematics. The law of complements simply provides an alternative method for computing probability of events. It's very useful whenever we realize that there are fewer sample points in the complement of an event than there are in the event itself.